Hello. Welcome to the Soybean 101 lecture series. Today we're going to begin our series with soybean plant pathology. My name is Clayton Olye. I'm a plant pathologist in the Department of Plant Pathology and Crop Physiology of the LSU Ag Center. And today we're going to talk about soybean pathology. But first, I think it's important that we understand a little bit about the concept of plant disease, how that works, and then move directly into the soybean pathology. So let's start with a definition. What is a plant disease? Well, there are a lot of different definitions of plant disease, but the one I've chosen for us today has a, a phrase in it that is very important as far as what we do in soybean pathology. It goes like this, any abnormal condition or change that occurs within a plant that interferes with its normal structure, function, or economic value. The reality is that plant disease is a biological function. It really has nothing to do with economic value. But if we look at soybean pathology and the fact that we're producing a crop that is of economic value, and the impact of those soybean diseases on that crop, economic value becomes very much a part of our definition. Let's look at the concept of disease, starting with the disease triangle. The triangle is used because it is an easy way for us to define and look at the components of disease that have to occur at the same time. For example, we start with a virulent pathogen. In other words, a pathogen that is capable of causing disease. Secondly, we have a conducive environment. A conducive environment is an environment that deals with not only temperature, rainfall, and these sorts of things, but also fertility, uh, soil type, other types of environmental components that are capable of producing uh, a pathogen and allowing it to grow within a particular um, environmental range. And of course, we have to have a susceptible host. In other words, a plant that is capable of being diseased. And when all three of these components come together at the same time, we have plant disease. Okay. Now, let's look at these overlapping circles, which is another uh, way of looking at uh, plant diseases and the components of disease. Again, we have the susceptible host, the conducive environment, and the pathogen. But by the way they overlap, in the middle you can see that we have the darker red, which is disease. In this particular case, the more the overlap in the center of all three components, we get more intensity, a more development of that particular disease also called not only intensity, but severity. When we look at soybeans in particular, in any field crop uh, for that matter, we're not looking at an individual plant. We're looking at a population of plants. And so we not only look for disease, we look for disease that has developed uh, over time and over space. In this particular illustration, you can see where we have the disease triangle at the very base of our pyramid, but at the top we have humans because we as humans influence disease by many of the things that we do, especially in our cultural practices and by the environment that occurs uh, around us. So over time and space is how we measure epidemics. So an epidemic really is the development of disease over time and through space. 